um, I joined I joined in Isaac a uh, long time ago, and actually to in the group that we have with uh, uh, my team uh, on AI, my uh, regional manager, uh, BD as well, that we are a big team, we are calling the sales team. Um, and I was actually just sharing that like was a memory on my Facebook that six years ago, uh, I was ending my transition for my first role as a BD manager in Isaac in Italy, right? And so that remember me also like how much uh, yeah, I did a lot of role in Isaac, but also like how much most likely you're very young. Uh, I don't know, in America, so when I was asking, I uh, was, I'm joined 2017, 18, um, and we've seen a bit, but also I'm very, very interested to see because of course, I always think that all this session and, and so on can be uh, a learning opportunity for everyone. And even more, if we are in the end coming and joining Isaac in a different year. Um, so I really hope that this session um, can actually be a learning opportunity for all of us. And looking on... Uh, uh, when it's coming about the objective, uh, we'll see mainly like three main objectives. So one is like to understand more the global and regional portfolio. Um, if you are very passionate about uh, um, governance and uh, rules and compendium, uh, I don't know, but I, I, I became. And then, uh, definitely like you will see also in the AI principle that is a session that Monique will deliver for you as well. Um, then we have a part where it's called global regional portfolio when it's a bit more clarity in like, okay, what are the main product that global and regional we are selling? And also like, we'll understand more a bit like, okay, what I can do about it, right? Like how this can be, become an opportunity for me. <laughs> and then also evaluate like how we can now scale and sell um, in, in your entity, aside your national portfolio, we have a bunch of ideas for you. Um, then you can also take it uh, uh, and of course, customize it for your reality and change it. And also understand more like how we can include also EWA uh, and in the BD portfolio and also to support the, um, the organization. But before um, to go there, uh, I also forgot, where is it? Okay, there is not anymore my slide where we have, but like, so I will tell you a bit now, uh, <laughs> but like uh, in general, like I'm Chris, and uh, uh, for the people that don't, that don't know me and everything, as I was saying you before, I joined in 2013, so a long, long time ago. Uh, maybe you can also drop now in the chat when you join Isaac. And uh, <laughs> I, I definitely like, uh, um, I made business development one of the, the bigger way for me to contribute to Isaac. Um, I, I have done like um, all the roles that business development uh, has in Isaac, uh, but to me it was not a collection, for me it was always a reason like, okay, what I can do more, what I can learn more and how I can contribute. I have been two years with in Italy and was a very grow experience for me because definitely was no COVID, uh, but Isaac in Italy was coming from a big debt. Uh, and a big like uh, financial crisis situation. And so I remember when, for example, I started my term as business development the, six years ago, um, I remember like right after transition, my finance, MCVP finance coming to me and say like, okay, Chris, we need to bring this amount of money and there is no option, right? Um, and, and for me it was very like, well, okay. And, and I think that from that moment started a very huge learning curve that then turned also like, okay, start to see me also what are maybe the partnership that I want to see in Isaac, which are the punch I didn't want to see in, in, in Isaac in Italy. And also like what we want to do uh, for long lasting, right? Because I think business development is something that um, is built year by year. And like, it's very important to link and green continuity because also external uh, company, it really changed. Um, and that's also was the main reason why I decided to stay and I decided to be uh, MCDPBD uh, in Italy because also was the first year uh, that we started to have a double structure, so a small team, uh, and also was the year that uh, after actually achieving the goal of revenue that we were supposed to achieve and start to have more, let's say, a financial stability, um, do also other changes when it's coming about financial model and so on, was also the year now of uh, um, deciding who actually want to have the partner or not, right, and which are the projects. And then later on, I was saying, okay, there's nice BD, but I want to see something else. So I moved in Mia uh, and I was MCT of Jordan. Um, I think it was one of my awakeness call when it's coming about not only understand different culture, but also more understanding that there are different Isaac uh, and all of them are valid and beautiful at the same way. It just matter to understand how to capitalize on it. And then Mia region uh, conquers my heart. And then I was regional office and I was business development manager there. Um, there was definitely an incredible opportunity for me to understand different market and understand how we can do um, different things. Um, and also, <laughs> and then later on last year I was in AI and I was BD manager and now I'm AI VP 
uh, BD, managing like a, a group of uh, super talented women. Uh, and uh, that made me super proud because um, you might know like sales is usually a very uh, male uh, sector uh, and usually pretty sexist as well. And for me, uh, being in Isaac in a group of full of women, uh, very talented and also like uh, um, showing that like this uh, Isaac can also break these stereotypes for me, make me very happy uh, and proud as well of the organization. And now I see, okay, so Lackster is joining 2018 Jelit in uh, Jelit, I hope, uh, in 2018 as well. And what about the other people? Oh, okay, 2015, okay. Okay, June 2018, 18, okay. 17, 19, 18, okay. Yeah, great. So <laughs> that is definitely uh, very interesting. And like uh, after Americas, I'm not surprised anymore, but definitely I'm still a bit in internet surprised. But like why I was asking this is because, and yeah, my background, okay, I need to be a bit closer. Okay. Um, why I start to ask this for, because I don't know you, how you feel, but uh, when, I, like six years ago, uh, the picture I was talking to you about in my memories, Definitely, there were a lot of things I was like, oh, I want to do one, two, three, people are telling me, but I was missing a lot, like, okay, how I will do that, right? Uh, and I want to, that's what we discover a bit more, but like before going there, I want to ask you, and you can just drop in chat. Now the most like had transition and you start to have a first idea, like that you wrote in the application and then later on, you know, to transition, you start to challenge them, confirm, um, and you start most like now prepare, like now you have RF. Uh, RFS and then later on most like you will go in planning so my question for you and you can just drop in the chat uh, is like what do you want to achieve during your BD term MCVP BD, BD manager depends on your position also if you anyone want to speak as well you can just raise your hands and uh, and start to speak as well So, Jay Lead is saying BD product innovation, multiple revenue, sustainable partnership. Then Isabel say boost the national uh, sales capacity and make great BD. Isabel, I'm assuming that you have uh, you or you are planning to have LCBP BD. I don't know. Let me know in the chat. And to establish uh, a sustainable revenue model for MCNLC, um, a better BD governance and culture, unified sales force, new revenue stream. Okay, yes, Isabel, do. <clears throat> and I'm assuming as well at this point that Lucky Sita, I don't know, like I don't know, I'm thinking I'm very pronouncing very wrong with his name. Lucky Sita. Lucky Sita. Okay. Lack Sita. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> I'm very also kind uh, with the name. That's great. Anyone else that want to drop the last thoughts on why you, what you want to see, what you want to achieve during your term? Improve sales with the entity. Make that make sense. Okay, great. And anyone, if anyone wants to also drop um, your message later on in the chat, it's still always valid. Um, and I think that is great, right? And I think also like when I'm looking on Asia Pacific uh, and the old things that Isaac went through in 2020, 2021, for sure, I think was one of the region like uh, that before like step, like step up and then start to say, okay, there is something that we need to change, right? There is something that um, we need to do. And maybe there are other ways where, where we can contribute to society, to the development, um, to actually youth and creating an impact also not only through maybe exchanges we used to, right? And I remember when also, to be honest, COVID-19 happened was, uh, I joined in an Isaac very different. I joined in an Isaac 2013, where maybe it was less process, was less organized, definitely was more messy, uh, but it was also more like uh, up to you to do what you want, right? Of course, always being more uh, um, aligned and uh, of course with the Isaac way, with the organization, the value. Um, and I think also like, uh, because this helped me a lot during my BD experience, right? But still, like, uh, no matter how I joined Isaac and my experience, when I was MCVP, 
BD and I was starting my term. And then I would say like, okay, I have big aspiration. It was the first year we were doing new sales. Uh, I would say, okay, I want, I, I love to challenge people. I say, okay, I want to challenge the status quo. I want to make sure new sales will happen. I want to show that actually there is a lot of things that company and a youth organization can do in Italy in a country with a lot of problems where there is a lot of immigration. There is a lot of uh, um, like mafia. There is like, I don't know if you know guys, but there are a lot of problems with uh, organized uh, criminal crime. Um, where there are a lot of problems about like uh, people not understanding each other, right? And I'm making racism going over. And I said, yeah, I, I really want to do something. I really want to make sure that I have uh, partners that make sense for the organization, but partners make, want to make an impact for youth, but not only an impact, but also want to listen to them, right? And for me, it was very clear what I want to achieve. The, the point was for me, like how? Like I remember, like when I start and um, my BD summit was uh, in October, so uh, you will realize October is pretty late, right? Like it's important to have a lot of knowledge here now in this moment <laughs> and then continue to learn. But of course in October, you should be already be there out of uh, selling and, uh, and everything, right? And then I remember that like, I just started to ask and everything. And like, I think that through this session, what we want to do is also to answer a bit more, okay, how? Um, of course, it's not a unique way. Of course, like I think how to achieve what you want to achieve <laughs> there is the old session of the summit, but I think, of course, global and regional portfolio as well, they can have a player role there. Um, and starting from this, like, before to go, let's say, in the deeper in the knowledge and everything, like, I want to start a bit from a concept of, okay, what is a business portfolio, right? I uh, Later on, also, you understand why I'm saying this, but, like, for sure, <clears throat> a portfolio, like a business portfolio is, like, in general, a complete collection of service, right, that you have, uh, that you can sell. Right. And in different cases, um, you can have one product or more product. And as you know, and you might be familiar or you already saw, like in Isaac and our business model, we have different types of product, right? We have a product that are developing leadership directly, um, but also we have product that actually like want to um, start to amplify the impact that, uh, that Isaac is doing. And other like maybe a pro program and project that are like created from business development, right? Like uh, ad hoc for company organization. Although, I think it's very important to know because, for example, as business development, I always like to refer to this. It's a bit like, you know, the joker in the card, like that can actually sell all of this, right? Because it really depends on what you want to do and what actually the company is looking for. And then, of course, like one thing like I'm saying this is also like for Isaac per se is a guide. Like I don't think that like for us, the portfolio, also for the nature of the organization and what we are, we cannot like, you know, just have one product and then, or having a portfolio and then sending, sending let's say the portfolio to um, all prospect before neither talk to them. This will not work, to be honest. Like uh, uh, I think that if this will work, most likely Isaac will have a lot of money and will be all like, you know, in a different state, but this doesn't work. And it doesn't work and like, um, and I think also we'll understand during the summit why, how it can work. But like one thing that I was reflecting also with my team is that of course, I like over the year, and I think by the way you joined, um, was way more like a B2C approach, right? Like we focus a lot in, in exchange uh, and we definitely start to see this as a main resource of revenues that I don't see anything wrong on that. But like I think definitely we need to be aware on how this uh, make us um, change the perspective, right? So usually we are thinking like, okay, for example, I have global talent, uh, and like, you know, I know my product and then I just need to find the youth that actually want that product. But when it's coming about business development, it's, it's, it's changing the perspective because it's more like B2B perspective, right? Like I, if you think about it's like I'm Isaac and then I'm a company and together we are creating an opportunity for youth, right? So it's pretty different. That's why also the approach change and like we'll also learn during the summit, but it's becoming very important to ask the right question um, to the partner to really understand what are the pain, what they're looking for, and then you know your portfolio and then you can make the best out of it, making sure that like you are bringing your perspective and you are proposing in the end, not what you want to propose, but like what actually they need. And also knowing budget, knowing decision making and in all my experience, this one and another things that I will tell you a bit later was actually one of the key uh, points that make me, in the end, have a, a good achievement for Isaac, right? And of course, also not by myself, but also with a very good team. Uh, and the other point that actually we'll see is actually a global regional portfolio. Um, so this is an opportunity. Uh, and this, I think, is something that we want to 
I want we want to present also to have more clarity because during like this year and also working more with the BD Commission, sometimes we have cases where, for example, like maybe a national partner or a national prospect um, is interested on a regional event or global events, but maybe you don't have um, you know the key information just to reply. And then of course, in the end, in this moment, like Isaac will miss an opportunity, right? So through this, uh, let's say next chapter of the session, I just want to share with you more what, what is global and regional portfolio. So in the case you will find maybe a partner or a, a national prospect that like is uh, uh, interesting, like you can already reply. And then of course, uh, the step will always be to involve Sumeda or uh, her successor or uh, um, Isaac International, if you see the global lead through um, Soraya, that is also the other person of uh, one of my of my members of the team. So uh, starting from there, uh, I think that the bigger category that we have when we are looking on uh, on the business portfolio of BD uh, of the BD initiatives on one side, uh, um, the global exchange uh, um, product here, like product you see, and then the other one is the global uh, amplifier product. Um, of course, as you will see, and why there are these names, also these are the names that you will find um, in, uh, in the uh, principle as well that I was telling you, Moni also will talk more about uh, in, uh, in, in a coming session. But these are also names that I want to uh, more to define, of course, for our external stakeholder to translate a bit what we have in Isaac for the external work, right? Because maybe experiential leadership development will not be that clear uh, when it's coming about uh, uh, external stakeholder. So when it's coming about global exchange product, we are including global talent, global teacher, global volunteer as well. And this can be taken both, as you know, from national, global um, and the entity partner. Uh, of course, with different setting also we'll see a bit later. Uh, but then of course, this can be moved also like, let's say, um, develop also in, in a more uh, complex and interesting product as well for your national partner. And we'll talk in a bit. Uh, and then we have also the amplifier, um, that is like, uh, um, is more like uh, the engagement with Isaac. So the famous Iwa uh, that now we, we start to talk more about it as well. But, and also all other products, for example, business development want to create, to create more awareness and amplify what Isaac does. So practical example, if you might remember, for example, the, I mean, Global Leadership Day as well is a BD product, right? Like it's something that we start to create and deliver in the, develop in the last two years, uh, for example, to create more, uh, talk about leadership. No, in the end, of course, we are talking about like, and we are aligned on what Isaac is, but not necessarily, for example, is um, an engagement with Isaac. And I think this is very important because also the business development product is where uh, I found myself one of the coolest part of BD, uh, for me at least, because it's also where I could really express my creativity uh, and create different pro project and product, like of course capitalizing what Isaac has. Um, like one of those, for example, the last year was for me was Expo um, and, uh, and the partnership with DP World. So I remember, for example, like my first meeting, I was there and I say, okay, what is the problem, what you're looking for? And I say, okay, we have Expo. Um, if you don't know, it's a huge, uh, it's kind of Olympic game, uh, but about like a very cool thematics, like it's, it's an event that usually happen every four years. And this year will be about future uh, innovation, youth, uh, sustainability, and we'll be in Dubai and it's always changing city. Uh, last one was in Italy. Um, and then of course was delayed for COVID. But I remember when I started to have a conversation with uh, DP World, you know, it was not like, okay, we have global talent, uh, but like, it was more like, okay, what you're looking for, what you want to do, right? And then of course they were saying like, oh, we want to like to have diversity. We would like to have a, a international. Um, we would like to have actually people know more about DP World, right? And then this turn in a partnership where we have a digital campaign, uh, we have global talent and we have also like a new pilot uh, just directly with the partner. So I think that like, is very important because without curiosity, without this awareness of which are the portfolio that we have, but also what we can do with it, most likely we'll never sign that uh, big partnership. That in the end, I think is bringing a lot of relevance for Ryzen to be in any events. Um, that uh, there are a lot of company, there are a lot of uh, let's say uh, there will be a lot of uh, um, uh, attraction. Um, but also on the other side, uh, doing something good for youth, in particular when it's coming about like youth recovering uh, for a world after COVID, right? <laughs> and I think why I'm saying this and spending a bit more time to share this is also because I think it's very important to always map out as well, maybe which are national events that might happen or also sub-regional 
um, because also I know AP has a lot of also sub-regional component that maybe you could rev leverage on and working together um, to actually make uh, an opportunity out of it. Um, and of course, <clears throat> in a normal matter, what is inside this is also conferences, uh, low, like physical, virtual, um, but also digital market engagement. When we're talking about this, we are talking about different, like uh, not only the campaigns. So campaigns is one week. Campaign is usually done for awareness, but it's also more for uh, also maybe workshop, challenge, events, uh, uh, different things that actually um, can be done uh, virtually as well. Great. And also, like for this, I, I to be honest, like I know also you fix in AP, you have done a lot of events. So I think that those is great. Um, over 20, like 2021. So I think that could be also like, my invitation as all conference to make sure that also you're talking to each other, maybe asking questions and sharing GCP, uh, besides also the spaces that you will have over the, the session. Good, so before to move forward in the next chapter, I just want to have a small break and just uh, ask you if uh, what you, like if you have anything to share the thoughts, if you have also any questions uh, regarding what I have uh, just uh, told to you. Or if it's all good, yeah, wait, someone. All good, okay, if it's all good, you can just give me a sign uh, in the chat, uh, in the camera, uh, great. Okay, cool. So <clears throat> on the other side, um, what we have, uh, uh, so what happened also in the past, uh, I think when I, the internal summit, I think was one month ago, some, somehow, <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay. Um, as I'm, I was telling you in the beginning that I like to challenge uh, the status quo, I think also my team like to do so. Um, so in the, in the first hour quarter, we were, uh, of course, uh, talking a lot, right? And I think that like uh, uh, COVID-19 per se uh, <clears throat> impacted everyone, right? Like no matter what. Um, and I think like, of course, with that create also a lot of opportunity. I think when it's coming out of business development, sometimes we start to see this opportunity later. But also because I think the corporate sector uh, took some time to really, uh, I think, accept the new reality, right? I remember when uh, last year I was talking with the first global partner uh, saying like, okay, we are doing a virtual conference, we are moving IC virtual and so on. Like they were looking like, okay, how, what, like, you know, they, like I, I remember when I was having the first conversation in April, May, they were still thinking like, okay, but in September, everything will be back um, and we'll be all good, right? And of course, like September then arrived and we realized that everything will not be uh, all good. We'll just take a bit longer, but I think also everyone started to see like, okay, maybe this can be also an opportunity. Um, and, um, oh, sorry, uh, give me one second. And also I will uh, I will reply to the question. Um, and, and I think that like the point was also like, uh, while accepting the reality, we start to see also opportunity. Opportunity of, of course, what we can do more online, more accessible, uh, but also I think, for Isaac was uh, an opportunity to leverage more on partnership and I and, and company because of course all traditional way of a lot of company use for example to reach youth um, was not possible anymore right the university were closed not all university could manage to really uh, fastly change uh, uh, their like you know um, lecture from physical to virtual and so on and so Isaac I think start to play a role um, but why, of course, this change and conversation we're having with company and, of course, also um, from one side opportunity, from the other side also a lot of no, because, of course, budget are very, um, I, I feel unstable now, <laughs> because, of course, there is like more opportunity to still have budget available, but also on the other side budget that could be cut. Um, we were talking with our team and say like, okay, but like what, like, maybe there is something that we should change or refresh. Um, and then we start to realize that actually the first time that like we stop um, and 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 to re to review the things was a while ago. And I think also besides COVID nineteen, of course we have a change of generation, right? Uh, and I think that like now because uh, technology and everything, everything we more faster. And of course we start to realize, okay, we maybe we need to update something. Um, like so, what we decide to do, we decide actually to have an internal summit. And in this summit, we start to review the portfolio. That we have, we start to review actually uh, what needs to be changed, but also which are new possible idea. And in the next chapter, uh, before uh, I will reply to the to the answer to Jaylee, but like uh, um, we will see actually what uh, some of the idea that we had uh, that most likely you will do pretty maybe similar things, maybe something no, 
Um, but we just felt that like could be nice to share with you and maybe use this more as a food for thought or maybe new things that you can uh, you can implement as well or maybe you can just uh, um, take a part and adjust in your um, in your reality. And uh, before that, so Jay Lita have a question. So what you um, can offer to partner can be creative, best part. Um, and partner will come up with different. Uh, how do you draw the line of what we can do, what we cannot? Yeah. So I think that like for me, what uh, the line for me is the compendium and the Isaac way. So that uh, that is my line. And of course, like synergy, like, I mean, of course, as a business development, it's good to be creative, uh, but it's also important to, in the process of being creative, involve the key stakeholder, right? So for example, as well in um, for DP world as well, because of course Expo will happen soon. We start to also discuss like, okay, what we can do after. And we had a lot of idea. And for example, in the process of, uh, uh, we, we had, for example, the meeting where we understand pain, where we understand like uh, um, timeline, budget uh, and everything to have all key information. But after that, for example, my manager involved other people, um, like for example, Katya, that she's managing like uh, uh, global volunteer, the all part also for IWA. Uh, there were Sumeda, there were Soraya that are more working for new states and also knowing more the market. And for example, we work together to make, and also now that she's responsible for brand. And we work together, for example, to make sure that the brainstorming is already like done on a way that like we are proposing something that Isaac can do, right? So that I think is also very important. Um, and then of course, in the first line, when you have maybe one-to-one -one conversation, of course, I think like Isaac Way, so our value, what we are believing for, our vision, but also in company, you will see there is a, a paragraph where we say that we are not partnering, for example, with company where um, they are investing in war or also like uh, um, tobacco company. I think one uh, company and industry that is not there is like alcohol, for example, that I think really depends on the culture and like on the nation. Like, so I think that like, I think it's really important all of it other industry that could be a bit like uh, challenging or create issues for your brand, it's very important to make sure that you are checking your national reality, right? If you know, for example, like I'm was Jordan, Muslim country, drinking is not accepted well from the society. I will never do a partnership as Isaac in Jordan with like uh, an in-kind company, Falco, for example, never. Uh, but yeah, I think maybe you have a follow-up question, so you can go. Thank you so much, Chris, for taking that question. Uh, I wanted to know how do you, uh, you know, like different companies will come up with different ideas and I think it's very important to be creative in how we approach business development as well and as you, so how do we go on to attach a price to something that we haven't done before, for instance, like a, a digital challenge we do for a company or uh, maybe like an MTO program for a local company, like how do we define what price should be attached to that value proposition. Yeah, so I think that like for, so when you are going, and I think also you will see in the summit, but like when you're interacting with a company and as a process of be creative is first asking the right question, right? And asking like what they're looking for and so on. Part of asking also the right question is usually to understand which budget they have available, available for this type of initiative. And I know that like uh, talking about money and so on, like in some culture can be a bit challenging and everything, but like, I think also, if not the exact amount is important to have a range, right? So then you can have a first, like uh, also know to not propose like things that you will never pass it, right? Um, and I think that is from one side. On the other side, I think that like when it's coming about then create the pr a price uh, during the proposal and so on, I, I will never suggest if you're not sure in this situation to give a price in the meeting. I will rather more saying like, yeah, I prefer to uh, tell me what is your budget available or the range. And then I will need to make some, you know, internal check with the team and so on. And I will make the price with the proposal, right? So you are not saying a price that then might be different. That's the first thing. Second, what I will do is that why I'm building the idea and the proposal, making sure that it's aligned on what the partner is looking for. I will also look for example, okay, which are the a, a resource that I need to invest, right? In terms of HR, in terms of like marketing, in terms of like, uh, I don't know, possible costs, uh, depends, right? And then you start to understand which are the costs and the resources that you need to invest and you start to have a leverage, right? And from that, you can start and you, you add a cup of, I don't know, depends on your reality, um, 30, 50, 80% more, that this will be more the part of profit. So I think this can help you out a lot. I think also you can synergize with your finance as well, um, you know, to have some more, uh, um, adjustment, but I think that, and I think also why putting the price is also always very important that 
from one side is on the range that the company gave you, but also that they give you some space to have still good profit, but also margin of negotiation in case, for example, you need to maybe adjust something. Uh, so yeah, I hope this can help you out and reply to your question. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, cool. So moving forward on what maybe you can uh, downscale or take as an idea. So one point, as I was telling you before, right? We were talking about exchange amplifier as a main category. And then I think um, there is the global talent that like from a global talent can become an international talent acquisition. Um, Sometimes we see these as the main things of, uh, oh, um, this makes sense on regional level or AI. That's why we are, you know, the global coordinator, they are managing in the end, like a uh, um, recruitment and position for more location in the company, right? And that definitely could make sense, but like, we have also a lot of entities that they are having this at national level <laughs> because maybe um, more than one department on the national office is actually managing and having interest with ISA. And so, for example, when you have uh, maybe like, uh, I don't know, 30 GT per year or 20 could really make sense to start to turn it more as an international talent acquisition. Why? Because, of course, you could have a national coordinator that can first or on one side uh, um, managing the recruitment, but also managing all the experience of the interns, uh, the community they want to create in the company and so on. And of course, this can create also like an uh, advantage for the company, but also like uh, um, as well uh, uh, costing uh, like less uh, um, less cost because of course usually talent acquisition is pretty um it's pretty expensive and so on that also we are competitive but i think also even more the price for me is more the attention and the um yeah the attention and also the feature that isaac can make in place in terms of recruitment but also in terms of profile in terms of people that actually can bring in the company even more if our isaac right so that i think is something that could be interesting for your reality uh, to also think in particular when you have uh, maybe big, uh, um, you know, national office or big multinational in, in your reality, that definitely something you can look at. Uh, and of course, with here, we have also the part of partially remote, where I think that like, I know that a lot of entity when we start to implement were challenging. I think that like one of the main challenges is the legalities, but I think that like one of possible things that you can consider is that when you are having maybe national office of multinational, then also through the support of Sumeda or AI, one of the best way to actually have partially remote is usually uh, for us also global partners that they are signing, for example, they have two offices. And for example, I'm from Italy uh, and then I'm going to do an exchange in Pakistan. Um, and then, for example, the offices are both uh, in Italy and Pakistan. And in the case of partially remote, usually I'm Italian and I'm signing the first part of the contract with the Italian office of the company. And then I will move in Pakistan. So this is also something that you can keep in mind when you are discussing and proposing uh, partially remote. Of course, make sure not to promise something that you cannot deliver, but maybe you can mention as an option and then, of course, check. And if you want to know more about partially remote, um, you can check here the hub. I think for me, I think it's very, I, I will really encourage because um, I, for sure, mobility will not be the same after. We can already see vaccine rollout is different, different com in different country uh, with different regulations. So and I think it will take some time before that everyone can be traveled freely. Um, and I think also company to ensure that like they will keep um, keep their place inclusive, right? Uh, I think they will keep opting like for partially remote or remote work. Uh, because think about it from a company perspective, if you start not to recruit anymore, like maybe one country, just because they don't have a steel vaccine, right? That will be a very bad, bad brand clash. Um, on the other side, I think one thing that also we are brainstorming, it was also like the part of core, global corporate citizenship program. As you know, or you might know, Isaac was uh, very uh, evocative about sustainable development goals and definitely something that we're still working on. And for me, as think it's something very important uh, for as an organization and also as a contributor, as a young leader. However, I think over the year, because we, um, how we brand it and so on, somehow, uh, confuse our stakeholder on okay what Isaac really does and so I think that yeah definitely Isaac and that we want to clarify a bit like definitely Isaac can support the society definitely Isaac can contribute to sustainable development goals but I think also on the leadership aspect right like this name always need to be there that's why also we decide to have a bigger umbrella and I think that like in this bigger umbrella for your in, like organ entity you can think about more from one side a possible benefits for a company can be um, to in the end, like uh, um, have talent to execute the initiative. So for example, maybe they are having projects, they're already working by themselves and they want to have uh, talented people. So that could be a way as well to create project team or maybe to have, for example, like some coordinator, their project manager, and then maybe use the Isaac network to actually deliver the initiative and so on. 
So that could be one. On the other side, though, expert in the field as well. Um, in general, like we have, uh, as Isaac, we are definitely working also a lot when it's coming about society, uh, but also we have a lot of big network, right? If you think about NGO, if you think about schools, uh, other organizations working on, and of course, Isaac can also be a very great link with that. Um, and on the other side as well, youth insights, right? I think now even more, as I was saying, the gap, generational gap is big. Um, and as well, like um, companies are getting even more lost uh, sometimes on what youth really wants, right? Because millennials are very different from Gen Z sometimes. And still there are like a seven year of difference, right? So definitely this can also help out uh, really to as organization to really understand more, okay, which are the main issues that we are going to, what also matter for youth and actually how we can do that with company. On the other side, other idea that we have that maybe you can uh, take uh, inspiration from was the whole part of digital campaign and digital initiative. So I think that like sometimes when we are looking, because also we are very strong in global talent, sometimes we are seeing uh, the employer brand, like digital campaign more like, okay, that is a diet way to do attraction and everything uh, to have more applicants. And I think, yeah, that can work. Although I think that like it's not the unique way and cannot be the unique things. I think that like digital campaign initiative can help a lot with employer branding. And this is usually more, um, let's say longer term. Um, and I can see that, for example, like also um, in Italy later on, because I was, uh, of course, I'm from there, so I'm monitoring and like we are in touch. Um, but for example, they, because they cannot do national, global talent, for example, um, we are really like they start to use that and we could really see how also national then recruitment of Isaac increase in, in national partner that they had a lot of employer branding initiative. And I think here is a very important as well to make sure that you will bring the youth print. Uh, I think sometimes a big mistake that we are doing is that because we want to be too much, um, let's say, uh, we are like we really need to make sure that when we are doing sales, we have a business uh, status, right? And I think when it's coming about this part and youth inside, we need to be very vocative about um, and not uh, and make sure that we are not only pleased what the partner is looking for. Why I'm saying this is because usually when we did also national, global level, regional, when we did part like digital campaign that were pleasing too much the partner, to be honest, were not effective, and they were usually not bringing the ROI that the partner and Isaac was expecting. So make sure to be. Um, to really think what you what makes sense, right? If you really think, that, for example, TikTok now is the things that like your youth, right? And the people you want to engage are one looking for, maybe really give it a thought, right? Like maybe it's just a matter of bringing more data and more GCP to ensure that, for example, the partner could start to consider and change their perspective. I think also that is also our role in BD, to be honest, uh, start to challenge a bit and make sure that also older people than us can change perspective. On the other side, of course, is product relevance. Uh, I think that is not a big surprise, but in general, more awareness about their product or what they're doing or the service initiative we can do together. And then, of course, target audience. So in general, I like penetrate in different markets, regional, global, um, and also through specific maybe Isaac entities. So I think that's also something very important. Um, moving on, like I think the like, last part is also like uh, what you can sell, right? Because I was telling you before, like uh, um, sometimes could come in, uh, in in the conversation and would like to give you some guideline instead of like just maybe, you know, postpone the conversation and maybe miss that opportunity. Plus, um, I, I mean, I know I'm saying this, so I mean, having to be this, almost like you might think like, oh, should we say this because I don't know, she want to convince us. I mean, to be honest, this is your choice, but like, in my experience, personal one, and also like seeing other entity, when we had entity actually working with regional office in Isaac International, where actually the uh, entity that could make big jump in terms of revenues uh, uh, and in terms of also delivery, because of course um, you could leverage also on the brand, right? And as well have more opportunity. Um, so I think that in general, from one side is also like uh, from one hand, what you could sell to um, and propose to your national prospect is the conferences. Um, and uh, so, sorry, you have from one side, of course, brand employer branding positioning, uh, and also as well, um, the global, like in terms of, uh, for example, if maybe they want to have a digital campaign with a different reach uh, than only national. On the other side, of course, uh, um, there is a part of uh, uh, IGT and in general, like expanding um, maybe the uh, global talent opportunity and the acquisition that in your country in another country. And then of course, as well, conferences um, that you could also propose and sell that is like the IPM, that is the International Presidency Meeting happening in February. Um, then the International Congress that is happening in July, August, um, and also the Expros uh, and as well the Regional President Summit and Functional Summit. And I know also Sumeda, 
this year was already working with some entity to actually uh, co-say and sell the regional summit. And I think that like this can really is a starting. I think there is a lot of things to improve, but definitely I think that is a, an opportunity for Isaac because what I always think and say is that yeah, we are having we are responsible for different markets, but in the end we are one Isaac, and in the end the impact that we are creating outside there is the same, um, and uh, and should be that in my opinion. In the end, are not uh, um, we should think about like the impact we are creating for the organization and the legacy we are creating for our entity, um, making sure that we are taking the best and the all opportunity we have out there. On the other side. Uh, before to move it on the last part as well, of course, you can also sell uh, on our behalf a digital initiative um, where also they can maybe interest to um, contribute to their employer branding and they want to showcase the different initiatives they have also in your country. Uh, and how to do that? Of course, there are yeah principles that Moni will talk more about because it was important to have governance to make sure um, that we are uh, protecting the, the, the brand of the organization because otherwise could potentially create a lot of risk if everyone will start to contact everyone without uh, no one knowing. Um, but this is mainly the general overview. And I, I think also will be always important maybe to reply um, briefly on, okay, what it is about and then on the other side making sure to involve for example like or your fellow mcdp if maybe you are uh, you know working and uh, two entity and you want to do some cross faces so selling together or for example if you have more entity in one region sumeta or ai uh, when maybe has uh, more than two region um and so have more global scope but then like last things uh, that I just want to say is like all these, it will be just to be honest, knowledge in a nice uh, maybe PPT and a Zoom background, like in a Zoom meeting, if you will not list your potential and current partner needs. I think that like, to be honest, like uh, also say change a lot and trend are changing a lot. So if you're nervous as me, maybe you already hear podcasts and so on, but like uh, uh, sales always become more and it's based like, uh, um, like a sales of like, uh, um, telling you and coming telling take this bottle and people will take it is very passive even more in an organization as i said um and i think that like also the two questions i have for you in the next uh, uh 10 minutes uh for uh, for our session and we'll go in breakout rooms uh we'll have seven minutes actually um it's like uh, what i would like you to discuss uh in the breakout room is like okay after I saw all this and I heard Chris uh, talking a lot and I hope it was clear, what is my role as MCVP? And on the other side as well, like how you can leverage on the global regional portfolio uh, for your end. So these are the two questions that I want you to answer and to discuss in breakouts. Um, and I think that uh, Chris can help me to uh, create yes. a breakout room. Yeah, so we will be three people for per breakout room. So you make sure that everyone can talk and express. This is very important. And then we will see back in seven minutes um, and we'll wrap up the session. Perfect, so should I open the breakout room? Yeah, thank you so much. Perfect. Bye-bye people. You all can start joining. Yeah. Uh, it's not visible, Krish. It's not open yet. Oh, excuse me, I haven't put you in the breakout room. Uh, all right, sorry. <laughs> Do you want me to? Um, it's okay. Okay, okay. Hi, Suru. Hi, Chris. How is it going? Good. <laughs> I know. It's struggling with the background, but uh, better <laughs> than uh, earlier. I can see that. <laughs> no, but now it's fine. Uh, before was uh, very bad. <laughs> I think this are too wide. Uh, Wonderful. So we are getting back. So I have a uh, time for one to share. So and I'm very curious to know uh, what were the key point of your conversation. So I don't know if anyone would like to share. You can raise your hand. Or, okay, there is a nominee. So Vanessa, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I, guess, I guess I'll share. So yeah, um, like during our space, we conversed a lot about what really was our purpose being an MCVP for BD. And I guess really like 
in general, we are the ones that provides the revenue for the entity and like somewhat ensuring financial sustainability. But I guess it's really more than that because we really are somewhat bridging that gap like from the youth towards like the corporate sectors and I guess just the global platform. So uh, um, one of the things that we mentioned, I, but um, was the fact that we really align like our external resources with the internal needs. So really, although that, you know, we must innovate products, provide that revenue, but it really all goes back to being more customer centric and providing the solutions to the pains of our, our of our partners because yeah we're leaning more towards long lasting purposeful partnerships but that all goes back to understanding the needs of our customers rather than us saying like take our products because we want our revenue but um as well as that yeah it's really just somewhat um going back to the essence of Isaac as being you know youth leaders we want to keep it that way so it's really like you know us young people connecting with externals out there and really showing them the Isaac values as well as I guess how we can connect with one another that is somewhat purposeful and also solution orientated so yeah <laughs> Oh, that is, that is great oh my god and and like I, I can plus one to everything you said and i think also like one point is like i wish like would be in uh in in a way that like you know we can just send our product and then someone will buy it right like but it is not about isaac it's not about coffee it's about like uh, uh human needs like it's very rare if you think about also you when you were maybe younger and you really want something right you had the needs you had the problem to solve and that's why you were so vocative about it and like that's why maybe you were so good to transmit with your, I don't know, parents or whatever, like who was helping out to make decision to really make the person understand that that was the right choice, right? And to be honest, that is the very things of uh, BDCs, right? Like if the company, but also they will not make a commitment, they will not understand, they will not see a value. Aside the money part, uh, like will be a very awful partnership, to be honest. Like I think that like maybe you can also get the money because maybe they have it and they just want to, you know, um, do something good for an organization. Uh, although nowadays there are also a lot of organizations, right? So competition is also way higher. But like on the other hand, you will not have partner committed. You know, you will not have a, 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 a equal status quo. And that would be super difficult in the end to have the outcome and the road that you're looking for for Isaac and for them. So yeah, definitely plus, plus one. And it's very nice to hear as well. Anyone else? Because also Somi said that we had a bit more time. So I'm taking advantage of it. Any other uh, nominees? Uh, Jay you can go. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to add something to you mentioned, like may, we all wish, you know, we could just put our products out there and uh, ask companies to uh, come and buy them from us. And of course, that's not how it works. Like it's a lot about human needs as well. But I was just thinking and I put it in the chat as well. Uh, like, can we put our services on a platform, maybe either a national platform or even a global one? and uh, you know just offer a general portfolio of value propositions we could offer in terms of maybe marketing or uh, talent acquisition even locally employer branding like all of these kind of services where companies can actually know what we can offer as a portfolio and reach out to us rather than us only reaching out to them which was also the like uh, pre uh, you know like the focus with uh, igt sales as well like we created that platform, uh, POP, uh, for that purpose as well, to have like mm -hmm. a scalable network. I, I watched the Academy by Radish in the previous term, and but we haven't really utilized that platform so much or even like a local platform, you know? Yeah, no, indeed. And I, I mean, I, I agree. And I think that when it's coming about like um, POP and platform, there is a project now that we are looking on a possible way uh, to refresh if it's feasible or not so that is something that we're looking at and but that will be of course taking longer time but i think one point that is very important is like yeah i think that when it's coming about sales uh, and this i mean of course um and i'm sure maybe you will see uh also over over the summit but like when we are talking about the upper part of the funnel right so aspect and prospect i think it's only need to be balanced between like uh, 
um, what like you reaching out to the prospect that makes sense for your, uh, you know, your market, what you're looking for and so on. And on the other side as well, also B2B, right? Synergy and what you want to do in terms of attraction. And I think that is also very important to make sure that in the MC, you will have also the right synergy. I think that like when I was planning back then, uh, six years ago, I was very lost because of course our focus was uh, mainly exchange. It was always like, okay, so what I should do in, in synergy, right? What I should talk about in the end, I'm not serving the network, but I actually, these synergy are very key. It's just more like, you know, working inside in the in the mc so i think will be i think very important to understand okay what in uh, in my entity is working for example for maybe i don't know events and speaking somewhere you know uh creating new connection where also i can make uh, um they say society know what i'm doing uh in general and then start to this kick, kick start the conversation like in gld just happened for example that uh, after a panel, one company say, oh, I want to know more, like, you know, about like uh, um, uh, this project with Isaac, right? And to be honest, it's not that in GLD we talk about global talent, we talk about what we are doing, was to be honest, an event about what Isaac can do. And I think that sometimes is pretty enough, because also I think that when we are going to uh, deep on uh, service and, uh, and not service and communicate, like, if still there is not a need, um, and also if you think about the amount of uh, information that nowadays we are receiving, if there is no need or interest, most likely like will not be data sold from the company. But I'm a super, super agree on the fact to diversify um, the way of that we are approaching uh, prospect for sure. And I think also capitalizing on the alumni network uh, that also can be a key wins. And so is doing an incredible job with that as well. So maybe you can um, also ask her more later on uh, on that. And yeah, so I think that we have last three minutes uh, and I don't know if there is one last question that I can definitely pick. Uh, if not, uh, I will move to close. Uh, I give five seconds. Okay, I have a question. Yeah, Vanessa. Yeah, so I just want to ask about the product pricing because usually the way that we've always done it was you would package it in a way where it's like gold, silver, platinum. But the fact that we need to focus more about like what the partner's budget really is. So should we really mm -hmm. like make it as somewhat a benchmark? And that all goes back to us trying to negotiate with the partners rather than tell them like, look, this is the set price, take it or leave it. Yeah. Um, that's just something that I was always curious about because I felt like the packaging never made sense because it appears as if like, like you, they need us more than we need them. So yeah. Yeah, I'm super happy you asked me this question. Uh, so, and it's very bad. So to be honest, the package uh, situation is uh, pretty updated. Like it's not something that is used. Like, I mean, there are still of course packages strategy, uh, but usually it's also a lot when it's coming about uh, product per se, you know, like uh, when um, it's more about like a uh, package, like you have still, for example, the same product, but different feature, you know, like if you think about it and, and it's a bit absolute because, and I think also more package you're putting more also means that most likely you don't have the key information that you need to have to do the right proposal that the partner needs. Uh, and these most likely will make even more confuse the partner, right? Because then you start to say, okay, so package gold or silver and so on. Although I always believe in things, not in extreme stuff. Of course, depends on the partner, depends on the conversation. And sometimes can happen that, for example, you identify what you want to propose, but then maybe because you have budget range, you can do maybe two package, right? Like maybe you can do two proposal on the same aspect. Although ideally should not be like should be very concrete on what they're looking for right so for example let's say they're looking for employer branding youth connection and so on like the product that you are proposing there is what they're looking for right like will be very strange if you're putting a package for example like ah you have a conference in gt no they don't need gt so why you're putting there for example right um and in terms of prices i think like what i was saying is like to know the range before to create the proposal right so you know the range but then what I will put there, it will be one price. Uh, and usually what I will do is like the different things that you want to propose, one price, and then in the price, you know that that will be enough to cover the cost profit and also to negotiate in case it's needed, you know, to remove maybe some part and so on. Um, and of course, like, and I think that like one package is a proposal is the best. And then I think always like is important. What I'm doing usually as well is like, okay, 
uh, in the process. And then I'm saying like, okay, I have the information, I will send you the, the package and so on. And then I will have a second meeting where I prepare, will propose you the proposal and we'll review it together so we can change stuff. So in that way, I'm also going and validating that actually the proposal I'm doing makes sense for the partner. And on the other side, also I'm validating the information I already collect. And also I'm having a one-to-one -one conversation if I need to change anything, right? So that's how we'll more approach. And then if you see the need to do maybe two package uh, for two investment on the same category will make sense, but I will really avoid uh, broad um, things on, uh, I don't know, three package and so on without need to having a conversation before. Uh, so I hope this answer to your question. And we are uh, at clock of the hours and uh, I can see there is, I don't see the name. Oh, I don't know, is it David? No, I don't know. Um, I don't, yeah, I know, Isabel. Uh, okay, I need just one second because we are delayed. So Sumi, should I take the question or no? Yeah, we have four minutes. Ah, okay, cool. So Isabel, you can go <laughs> and the last question. Uh, so I think like just now you also mentioned like for SDG it has been something that we tend to like really incorporate into our sales product but it's tend to like it start to shift up like it it kind of make our brand very ambiguous sometimes because uh, the the partners may like misunderstand that we actually focus a lot on SDG but uh, it's more about the other aspect we also want to touch upon. So do you have any suggestion like in terms of when we want to design our sales products, um, how are we going to make sure that um, the positioning of our events is something that is aligned with um, what Isaac is doing and at the same time, like um, we can communicate clearly to our partners about uh, the focus because like a lot of uh, even for the LC they do a lot of event on SDG as well so I think it's yeah so how do we uh, like how are we able to get a balance between um, mm -hmm. the two? yeah yeah that is very valid and fair uh, first things I don't think that like um we need to like well from one stream of the other i don't think there is any issues to do events about sustainable development goals and i think like for me it's always sometimes more how we are branding it right like um and i agree with you like some for some market can become ambiguous and that the point is like okay how we are communicating about isaac right but on the other point i think that like it's not only what we want to communicate like i think business development is creating a bridge right like i mean we know what we are as organization like you know like i mean uh, I don't think this is a lot of like to, we know what we want to do. We know what we are striving for, right? I think like the point is more like how I'm translating what we are on a way that like my market and uh, based on the trends and research that you can make what you find interesting, they can find interesting and appealing, right? So that's why I think like you will see some uh, country maybe focusing more on sustainable development goals as the main things because in the end, we are contributing and youth leader, I think they can and have a big role to contribute to sustainable development goals. And maybe some countries decide to go more vocative about it because sustainable goals is something very important and very appealing for the country itself, right? But I think that of course need to be balanced on uh, if you're going that vocative to make sure that like, you are also very clear and direct in the communication on what Isaac is, right? And I think that's when it's creating a bit of debate. Um, but like for, on the other side, for example, like you can see, okay, what uh, I know what Isaac is. I know, for example, which are the line, right? We are developing youth. We want to make sure that we can actually create a world where people understand better each other. We are striving for peace. We have a strong value, right? I think Isaac is a lot. And I think like through external market research, youth insights, so you can understand, okay, which are maybe the things that I want to focus the most this year or through in my event, you know, to in the end, um, attract youth and of course this is a match so there are different also like uh, uh, tools but like you can use for example canvas um, uh, customer canvas metrics like for example to then have okay what youth are interested for and what also company are looking for and then like you know have uh, these three intersections and that for example can help you out a lot to understand okay this is my topic for the events for example um and i think also another thing that i was learning as well uh, lately is that when it's coming about gen z usually they like a lot of options and they like also like i think it's also very important not only the topic but also to make sure that you're designing events where youth and gen z will be interesting to go to and they're actually like uh, uh, satisfying their preference i think that is also very important because also will make your life easier to get people and to have a higher role um so that i think is important 
and I hope this can help to your um, uh, to your question. And the last thing is also closing is like, what is the best value proposition which Isaac can offer to clients? Uh, if I will have this answer, I will be most likely billionaire. But uh, I think that you can get this answer on asking to the partner, asking to the client, um, Shade, what is like, you know, what they're looking for, what are their problems, what are their needs. And then back then you can understand, okay, which are the best value proposition for the partnership and for the clients and for Isaac. Um, it's not, it will be one answer for everyone, most likely. Uh, not only Isaac, but I think all business uh, uh, will be like billionaire, right? But uh, I think it's very important to figure out uh, uh, what you can do together. And I think for me, it's also very important in Isaac and BD, like to have a very strong purpose for the partnership. So there will be double commitment from both sides. And saying that, um, I hope this session was uh, bringing some new thoughts, uh, some idea. I hope you had a notebook where you can write. Um, and I want to take like my last minutes here um, to just remember that in the end of the day, um, we are dividing market because it's important to make sure that like uh, uh, we are uh, um, working towards our brand, right? And we are making sure that how we are positioning ourselves. But in the end of the day, um, and we, of course we need to have different responsibilities, but in the end of the day is one Isaac. It's one Isaac. It's one Isaac if we have a successful event in any of the entity. It's one Isaac we have an amazing GLD. Even one Isaac if we're having amazing like regional events. Um, is one Isaac, if in the end of the day, we can manage to have more revenues for the organization and create more value. Uh, because also, as I was always laughing about, in the end, I'm not bringing this money home. Like, I mean, it's for an organization, is to make sure that we can leave legacy and we can do an impact for the youth that maybe are not in Isaac yet. Um, and for the company that maybe don't know Isaac yet. Um, and with my team, when we plan uh, in January, we create a vision for us that like for us is something that is guiding us as a, uh, a star. And it's like that we want to, drive a purpose of partnership by amplify our collaboration. And uh, yeah, we are seven people, but definitely this we cannot do by ourselves. So uh, this is a call for you. And uh, I really looking forward to see uh, even more collaboration between uh, uh, all the part of the organization uh, for the future. And say that, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure to be in AP. Uh, and I wish you uh, the last session or another, I hope the last session because very late, but I don't know, or the last sessions uh, and a very good rest and meal and uh, and enjoy your summit. Bye, peeps. Thank you, Thank you very much, Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, so guys, we are having our last session, which is Harvest Learning. So you all can quickly join there and we are done for the day. Bye-bye.